Good morning all. It's a wonderful Monday morning. The weather is looking great. Um, and I've been inspired last night to talk about my job. My job consists of making films for other people. Uh, normally it's corporate work, products or um, company promo videos. Um, and occasionally I get to do uh, book trailers and things as well. So it's, it's always quite creative, good fun. And also part of my income is doing weddings. And I've noticed that quite a lot of people tend to ask me or ask around on the internet how to film a wedding. So in this video, I will show you how to do that. This is our gerbils home. And as you can see, it's quite spacious for them. Here's Oreo. Hello, darling. Now the back wall had a wall with a window, but now they've chewed it. So now it's all open. Because these little girlies like to chew the wood. The best time, ah, stinging. Ah. The best time to try new hairstyles is now. So you can do like, all the way swept back like this, or you can mohican it like that. <laughs> I've no idea how this looks. So now we're ready. I'm going to take you out to a church and show you how a wedding will be shot. Now, I'm not going to be going through a kit list or things to do before you go to a wedding. Um, this video is simply to show you the setups and things you have to think about before you shoot a wedding. There's a taxi in front of me who's just slowed down and stopped. And now carrying on again, what are you doing? It really annoys me actually, people who drive and they slow right down almost to a stop before they indicate to stop, which is already too late. And then I had to wait for cars to pass before I could overtake. And then, as the cars were passing, they continue to drive. <laughs> that annoys me, just terrible drivers like that. We're nearly at the church, guys. Nearly at the church. Nearly at the church. Well, you're getting a really crap tour of Birmingham because obviously you can't really see what's out the window. Uh, so I, I apologise for that. So we've just arrived at the church. Now, I don't know whether there was actually a wedding taking place today. It is a Monday. Um, so I presume it's okay to go inside. Now, before we get into how to film weddings, the chances are you'll be filming a wedding on your own and that's not a bad thing. And the reason for that is because a lot of people tend to book wedding videographers at the last minute. So you'll probably get a lot of late bookings, but fear not. This video is all about how to film weddings on your own. The first bit of advice I can give is, no matter what time the ceremony starts, always arrive at least one hour before it starts. And that's because once it does start, not even the ceremony, but once people start to arrive, you soon lose track of time and it escalates so fast and you don't want to miss anything. So the first thing I do is get a wide establishing shot of the church. Now, if you're not in a church, it doesn't matter. It's the same principle. The same format works across any, any place, whether you're abroad, whether you're outside, in a hotel, or of course in a church. So the first thing you need to do is get a wide shot of the building. Now, unfortunately, we can't go inside because they're refurbing the church, which means it's a work construction site. It's, uh, yeah, I certainly picked the right church, didn't I? Uh, maybe I should go to a different church. But generally speaking, once you've got your establishing shot of the venue, the next thing you do is grab all the detail shots. That would include the spire, the clock face, um, if you've got any nice plantations, um, things like that. Just stuff that makes the venue quite unique and interesting to look at. 
Now, of course, the next thing you do once you have all your establishing shots and all your little details is to then move indoors. And again, you're doing the same sort of thing. You're getting your wide establishing shot, a lovely central of the aisle shot, you know, maybe going from the ceiling if it has beautiful ceilings, and then you tilt down so you've got the seats on either side of the aisle. Just make it look quite symmetrical. Everyone likes symmetry. Again, go through the venue and get your detail shots, such as uh, stained glass windows, candles, the golden eagles, uh, any flowers that have been wrapped around the chairs. Now, after you've done all your venue shots and your detail shots, you get a bit of a breather before people start arriving. Now, they can come in big clusters and small clusters, and you have to identify who the groom is. The big giveaway is there's a, there'll be a bunch of guys wearing the same sort of suit. Um, don't be afraid to ask who the groom is. Introduce yourself, shake hands, and uh, be on your way. Now, what you can also do is mic up the groom with a lapel mic at that time if you wish, and then later on, near the time, maybe 10, 15 minutes before the ceremony starts, then hit record, and you haven't got to think about that audio again. So you've mic'd the groom, you've got your interior shots, then what? Well, like I said, at this time, you probably get a lot of people starting to arrive for the ceremony. So film people in waves, just grab several different shots of people arriving, um, get some close-ups, some nice mid shots, some greetings, especially with the groom, that's really important. Nice greetings with the groom. And then it's just a game of finding out where you can be. So what exactly do I mean by that? Well, when you do a church wedding specifically, you'll find that the rules will differ place to place, so it's best to talk with the vicar before anything starts to avoid any nasty surprises. Typically, uh, you'll be allocated a spot um, of which you will not be allowed to move from, which, as a videographer, you wouldn't be able to move much anyway. You, wouldn't, you definitely wouldn't be walking around. The second thing you have to abide by is no flash, which again isn't a problem for videos. The third thing you'll often be asked not to do is film the signing of the register, and that's more of a legal thing than anything else. Now the spot you'll be allocated will tend to be between the vicar and the choir, over his right shoulder almost, um, about six foot away or something. And it will depend venue to venue, depending on you know the layout of the church, that sort of thing. And of course the rules of the vicar. Now, sometimes I've had situations where I was not allowed to be up front anywhere at all. I had to be at the back, which of course causes a lot of panic because you're there to film a wedding and you want to make sure that you get the best shot. At the end of the day, the bride and groom have paid you to provide a service for them and they've seen your showreel. They know that they can get some beautiful shots. But unfortunately, it's not always that practical. Either the vicar tells you where you have to be, in which case you have nothing, there's nothing you can do about that. But sometimes you can. Always remember to be professional and try and sweet talk the vicar. If they're still adamant that you cannot be anywhere near them, then your best hope is to stick on a zoom lens, shoot from the back and just hope for the best. But at the end of the day, remember this, it's not illegal to film the wedding. What makes it difficult, particularly with where you're supposed to be standing, is all down to the preference of the vicar. So if you can't sweet talk them and you're not happy with being at the back shooting from that distance, especially if your lens isn't particularly great in low light, because the chances are the churches are going to be quite dimly lit, then your best bet is to use the smallest of cameras, like a GoPro session, and hide it in amongst some plantations or foliage or somewhere where he's not going to notice. Believe me, I've done that a few times and it has saved my life. Now, the other bit of advice I can offer is always make sure you have lots of microphones spaced around. So you've got your mic on the groom. If you can, and it is again vicar dependent, mic up the vicar. And the third place you want to mic up, or more of a generic mic, is around the church. So maybe have one uh, near the choir, have one near musicians if they have any, have one just to one side of the aisle, just to capture the ambience. And when people are singing, uh, you have that general atmosphere as well. So you've mic'd up the groom, you've mic'd up the venue, you've got all your establishing shots and all your details, you have people arriving. So what now? Well, like I said earlier in this video, time will go just like that. 
so be sure to keep tabs on what time it is and make sure you don't miss the bride's arrival. Once I'm sure that I have everything that I need inside the church, including shots of the groom looking nervous, talking to his friends, that kind of thing, make sure we get some groom shots because that's really important to build up the, uh, the wedding day. The next thing I do is go outside, I wait for the bride and I, I get her arrival, film her getting out, playing with the dress, meeting her bridesmaids um, and I tend to get part of the walk up towards the church. The moment she starts walking and I've got about three or four seconds of that walk, I will cut the cam and I will run back to the church. There's no need now to get a reverse of her walking towards you because you will, you will not have any time to do that. Get in the church, get to the front, and get ready for that first shot. Now you'll find, as soon as the doors open and she starts walking down the aisle, everyone's going to stand. So where you're going to be, no doubt, you won't be able to see the bride. So the first thing you should do is stand central of the aisle, more or less where the vicar is, but not in front of him, and make sure you capture the aisle walk. Now, this is where it gets tricky, because you now have to move from the central shot from her arrival down to where you're supposed to be which obviously requires moving the camera which unless you've got a second shooter you're going to have to edit around which is going to be very tricky so my advice is to keep it on a tripod and lift it slowly and gently move with it you can always stabilize it a little more in post-production just to kind of feather it out a little bit maybe blend it in with the footage so it's not quite so noticeable and finally just let the ceremony continue as it were. Try and go unnoticed as possible. Don't interfere with the day and always take a backseat approach to capturing anyone's wedding day. They will thank you for it. If you're shooting on DSLR, no doubt your camera will have a time limit on the recording. But a church wedding particularly runs over 45 minutes to an hour so how do you record the entire wedding? This is where the opening footage that you filmed really comes into play. You see, whilst you're filming people arriving, before the bride arrives, you're also filming people's uh, conversations, you're filming people sitting down, but try and pick out the people who are just looking ahead, maybe just seeing, seeing what's around the church, and these are the key people that you'll be using when it comes to that moment where you have to cut. Personally, I always cut during a hymn because um, you have the audio from the microphones to capture all that anyway, and you have your cutaways you can cut to. Now, of course, if you're using cutaways from people who are obviously not singing, who are sat down, then you can't really use those shots in the songs. What I tend to do is cut out a verse or a chorus, or trim the song a bit shorter, or maybe sometimes lose the song altogether, and then move straight into the rest of the ceremony. I've had no problems, no, no people come back to me and complained about not using the full song. Um, I know it's part of the day, but I can guarantee you when people watch their own wedding back, these are the bits that they will skip. They will skip the bits that are important, the vows, the ring exchange, and the final signing of the register. One final point to remember is when they go to sign the register, they'll be walking past you to the back of the church to get the final blessing. Now, this is also a bit of a tricky part because sometimes uh, they'll walk back down to where they were for one final hymn, a final reading, and then out of the church. Now you have two choices. You can remain at that point and get them leaving the church from behind, or after they've signed the register or as they're going to sign the register, you can always go uh, from your position to the front of the church for their final uh, blessing, hymn, for me, it's preferable to move position and go to the front of the church because it gets me in a prime position then, not only for them walking towards you and getting greeted by their friends and families, but also once they've left the church, they'll be with the photographer getting some shots straight away, so you'll be in the prime position for getting all that good stuff. Otherwise, if you remain, once their friends and families start pushing through to leave as well, you won't get through. And once you get outside, after the initial couple of photos, you're simply documenting the rest of the afternoon. You're getting the confetti shots. And it's always great if you could shoot that in slow motion if you've got the speed and capabilities to switch to that straight away. And once their car has driven off into the distance, you can breathe a sigh of relief. That's the hardest part of the day done. So one final piece of advice. There's only one of you. 
So if the bride and groom request that you get to the reception venue before they do so you can capture their arrival, there's a couple of things you can do. You can ask the driver to wait while you just finish packing the car and leave before they do, or you can request that they take a longer route. It's also important to remember that despite this video being a blanket of information that translates to a variety of different venues, you will always encounter things that you did not plan. So there's definitely an art form into doing weddings. You, you can't just base your experience off this video alone or other people's videos. You have to go out and film them yourself. Um, my advice would be to always do a couple of free weddings to start with friends and family, that sort of thing. So there's no pressure on you to get something right. Once you feel more comfortable with it, then maybe start looking at charging for weddings and start getting your name out there, business cards, flyers, uh, you can do wedding fairs, that sort of thing. So definitely consider doing that first. So those are the main points in shooting a wedding video. If you would like to know more about shooting the rest of the day from speeches, the photo call, to the cake cutting first dance, do let me know in the comment section below and I would happily go through those with you. I hope you enjoyed the film. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll see you next time.